So thank you for joining us again here at windsurftoots.com. Uh, this video is going to be a little less formal. It is a little bit more of an informational video than a tutorial. And before we started to move into the more technical aspects of Windows Server administration, um, you need to understand Active Directory. And you need to understand what Active Directory can do. And this is where I think a, a lot of Windows administrators, they maybe fall off the bandwagon a little bit. Active Directory is amazingly powerful. Um, it is also very, very complex. And sometimes that complexity can be daunting for a new administrator or even a seasoned administrator, but maybe they were kind of raised in the Windows NT four days when everything was done via login scripts and things of that nature. And Active Directory, Windows 2000 and then moving beyond that has really grown out of that login script mentality and so your administration style should have grown out of that login script mentality so basically uh, I want to just cover a couple of the points as far as Active Directory goes Active Directory is essentially a tree structure as you can see here right very similar to Windows Explorer you know if you're familiar with um, things that happen in Windows Explorer, you can kind of see this follows the same sort of premise. Um, you have, I guess you could define the root um, of Active Directory as the forest, um, but for the purposes of our tutorials, our root will really be um, the domain. And before we get into the domains and things like that, I want to just give you a little bit of a background. So Active Directory is loosely based on the LDAP protocol. LDAP is an um, open standard. It is not something that my, uh, Microsoft designed or anything like that. And uh, as far as the authentication mechanisms go, um, Active Directory is based on something called Kerberos. Um, you know that three-headed dog that guards uh, the gates of Hades? Well, uh, some really bright folks over at MIT use that same name. And Kerberos is really an authentication mechanism. And so uh, maybe some people might even be confused on this. So Kerberos will encrypt your usernames or actually more your passwords as they go across the wire. Kerberos does not encrypt your data. Okay, so Kerberos will take your password. It will take um, the current time and some other factors and it'll run all of that through this mathematical equation that produces a value and then it will take that value and send that to the domain controller um, and you know there's some other terminology in Kerberos uh, but it will send that information to the to the domain controller which will then look at that hash it's what it's called it will compare the hash to what the domain controller produces what it thinks it should receive and then if those two things match up then you are authenticated to the system. So this is why the authentication mechanism in the newer versions of Windows are much more secure than the previous versions of the of, of the Windows system. Now you notice that I mentioned that it will take and it will perform a mathematical computation on your password uh, based on a time. So a requirement for Active Directory to function properly is that there is a tolerance that all of the systems within Active Directory have to be within a certain amount of minutes and timing for each other. If the timing starts to be too variable then um, authentication will not succeed. So that's just a little bit of, of background on that and remember only the authentication is encrypted so if you want encryption for your communication for your systems within Active Directory, you would still have to use something like IPsec to um, encrypt that data. And we'll cover IPsec later in a different tutorial. So back to the kind of the structure of Active Directory. The big thing, if you're not familiar with Windows administration, the domain, right? Everything is, is encased in the domain pretty much. And the domain is a security boundary. That is the purpose of the domain. Um, in the domain, we have security groups and distribution groups, and I can, I'll actually show you. So if we go into this accounting, all these little 
folders that you see here are called organizational units and we'll talk about the purpose of organizational units but if we go into accounting we see we have a couple of different things here we have a workstation we have these are groups we have users and if I go to right click new and group you'll see security and distribution Security is mainly what we'll be using. Distribution groups really apply more to when you have a Microsoft Exchange environment. Um, so we won't touch on that now. But I want you to see these three options here. So you have domain local, global, and universal. And these will be important concepts to understand. So the domain local, think about it as if you have a resource in your domain. A perfect example will, example would be a printer. Um, and what you can do is you can actually put these um, groups inside each other like those little Russian dolls. One is bigger than the other and you keep putting them inside and inside and it allows for scalability of management. So let's say you had a printer and you wanted to manage permissions on your printer. Then you would assign the printer um, object and you would manage that with a domain local group. Then let's say you had these accounting manager and accounting users group. Well, what you would do for your accounting manager and accounting users group, as you can see here, I'm going to show you an illustration of how this all plays out. You have this printer group. Well, I happen to have a brother printer 2270 on my network. So the brother printer group, you could actually right click on this. You could do properties and then members you can see I have accounting users right so that's good now let's say you want the accounting manager to be able to manage those print jobs for the accounting department so you would click on properties for it. this group is aptly named brothers printer 2270 like the other one but slash admin so what do you think this is gonna do right it's gonna be it's gonna administer the print jobs so let, let's here go to accounting let's try to find these accounting groups and let's make sure that we put our accounting manager into this one we're gonna see how this plays out so we're gonna go over to our print server here we're gonna go into the control panel we're gonna go into printers and we're actually gonna do a whole video very soon on print management but we're gonna click properties on this printer and for security I'm going to do add and I'm gonna do accounting and what does this bring up? This brings up accounting managers and accounting users. Well, I don't necessarily want to add those to my um, printer because then every single time I have a new set of people that I want to add to this printer, I have to come through and I have to add that new group. So I'm going to cancel that. I want to add those brother groups, right? And I'll explain just a minute why this is important. So I'm going to do OK. Now if you look, the brother printer group just has print. That's what we want. We want normal users just to print. But this admin group, I want them to be able to print, manage the printers, and manage the documents. So I'm going to hit apply. Now this is good, right? But why didn't we just add the accounting group? Well, let's say now we have the marketing group, and we have marketing users and marketing managers. And then we have the sales group, and we have sales managers and sales users. We don't want to have to add all those users to that one printer object. So under the printer group, we can just add it here and manage everything locally. This is really how grouping scales. So remember, for a domain local group, we'll just click properties on here so you can take a look at this. So for the domain local group, that would be like your resource, like the printer. The global group is what you would put inside the domain local group. And then the universal groups are used if you have like multiple domains and trust between four. It's a little bit out of the scope of this tutorial. So this will kind of hopefully give you a little bit of information on security groups. And security groups are really important. It's a, it's a really um, fundamental thing that administrators need to understand. 
In the next video, we're going to talk about these organizational units here, and we're going to talk about a little bit what group policy can do for us. You've seen it come into play a little bit in some of our other videos, but just check out the second video that we have covering Active Directory, and you'll get a little bit more information about these organizational units, their purpose, and how you use them. Thanks for watching here on winservetoots.com.